go. Hey. Hello, everyone. My name is Jerry Ann, and, <laughs> and we started just a half a minute early so that I could try to set my little tablet up so, um, so that I could see comments. So let me see if I can get to it. Are we on? Yep, there's people. Lynn is on. Woohoo! Noelle is on. Oh, Ann hi Stone. friends. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. Nita. Hi, y'all. Nita. They're see, all... I was trying to see it myself. I'm going to try one more time. Um, how to... It's terrible to not know how to get to your own Facebook Live. Oh, well, I guess Doug will have to do it for me. I was just trying to get to where I could see your comments and say hi to you. But you know what? We need three people, I guess. Or maybe three hands. But anyway, I'm so glad you came. Thank you, thank you for being here. I pray that this has been a marvelous Monday for you. Um, and when I say I pray, I sincerely did pray. I prayed for everybody that it, uh, comes on the... Um, Facebook Live, I just pray for you. Um, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in the news and in the world these days. Just a little while ago, I saw that there's a fire tornado. Was that in L.A. or something, Doug? Yeah. Somewhere in California, a tornado with fire. Totally freaked me out. So I've been praying for everybody today. Um, if you are a praying sort... You are, uh, um, so it came to me also to invite you. We have a Facebook group called We Are Called to Pray. If you would like to join that, it's a free group. We pray. And I have started putting devotionals out there um, every day for the last hundred and something days. So if you are, I just do it Monday through Friday. But if you're interested in that, please come and join us. Now to today's um, event. We're going to do several things. I'm going to introduce you to a quilt. I'm going to show you a quilt that pattern that I'm designing or a, a quilt I'm designing. And I'm going to let you see my process, which might make you crazy. But, you know, it might help. I don't know. It might inspire you in some way. Also, I'm going to talk about the tools and I'm going to show you. I had a great suggestion last week to show you, show you how to um, do some of the different shapes. Y'all, I have found 50 different shapes, that, window shapes that could be made. So, um, I think he's found the Facebook Live. Now he's turning it down to silent. And it's handy to have a tech in the house. So, um, thanks, honey. That's great. It's the comments I need to see. So, anyway, we're going to do the... Um, Five shapes tonight. They're going to be quick and easy, but you'll get the concept and you'll understand. And I'm thinking I'll just keep going with the different shapes over time and show you how to do it. And then I'm going to um, show you how to finish the center of a quilt, uh, uh, the center of a Dresden, the different ways that I have done it. And I'll just tell you about those. And then at the end, we have a giveaway. And, um, and, so let's go. So let me introduce you to this quilt. This quilt is called Across the Way. And I took a class from an art quilter. Her name is Deborah Burchart, and she's from the Dallas area. And she does art quilts. Um, in fact, I think she's the president, I didn't look it up, but of Sakwa. And Sakwa is Studio, what did I say it was? Studio Art, I have it here. Studio Art Quilt Association. And um, so she's very, very talented and very informative. And I took a class from her. And one of the art quilt design, um, I guess, uh, compositions is what I'm trying to think of. Compositions is this one. And it's called One Great Line. So that's why I'm, when I made this quilt, that's what I was doing. So I'll deconstruct it for you. It's a um, whole cloth. So this is just one piece of fabric. It's not very big. Um, 
I'm going to guess 40 by 45 maybe at most. Okay, so here's the full Dresden. And if you'll look, it's got two windows. But there's something different about this that, that you haven't seen before maybe. And that is I, I filled the, low, the big window or what I would call the upper window. And here's the lower window, and what you see there is actually the background fabric. So I left the lower window open. See that? Now in this small one, this is the small Dresden, um, I did a whole window, but look, I just put fabric halfway down. It's like I just pulled the shade halfway down through that window and then left this showing the background. Now this one up here in the far corner that's falling off the edge is um, fully covered, uh, each window is fully covered in fabric. So that's three different ways you can do it. And if you notice, and I'll come back to this later, but if you'll notice this has a smooth edge. On my Dresdens, I just turned under the edge, you know, just turned them under. Um, and y'all know y'all know I use glue a lot, so I just glued them in place, hit it with an iron until I could get it to the uh, sewing machine and stitch that down. So that's what I did here, here, and here. So double window, a full window with only half a shade, and then a a, a window up there that's fully covered. So that's just to a reminder that you can do anything you want to in your windows. I mean, you can leave them open or half open or fully closed or, you know, think of it as a window in your home, right? You can do all kinds of stuff with that. Um, you can even let things show from behind. Okay, now, I'm designing a quilt. And um, I, have a, uh, I have a lot of friends... Well, two things. We do a lot of charity quilting, and so we use panels a lot in our uh, when we make quilts for the children. Uh, we, I'm the co-founder with Nita, who's on tonight, of the Christian Quilt Guild, and um, we are a quilting bunch that we have programs, and you know, just like a whole lot of other guilds. However. Our focus is all about meeting the needs of others. And so one of the ways we do that is through um, making children's quilts, and we give those to the Salvation Army Angel Tree every Christmas. So all year long we make quilts for the kids, and then we give them in the fall, I mean in December, to the Salvation Army. And we use a lot of panels. Well, I also am part of a, a couple of Facebook groups that are into panels, and I'm always watching because some panels are just super cute. Some I, I don't want, but that's we're all that way, right? But I came across one that I had to have, and that's kind of, that I wanted for me. It wasn't even like I wanted it for the kids. It was like I got kind of going, well, I think I might want that one. So let me show you what I'm doing with it because I'm going to add Dresden's. And the reason I'm bringing this up is so I can show you. Uh, my idea, and then y'all can watch as I um, build it each week. I'll show you how far I've gotten. And if I skip a week, that just means I didn't do anything on it that week, right? But look at this panel. Can you see it? Can you see it? Okay, so this little, this little panel is reminiscent to me of what I used to sing to my children. And now I have grandchildren, I've sing it the same song to them. And all I've done is I cut my panel. Oh, let me show you this. Above the panel, it had this little, um, this. And below the panel, it had the same thing. That You know, just, there were two of these. Well, what y'all don't may not know about me is I'm learning to applique. And look, friends. Look at this one. Can you see that? I am putting wool on on top of the leaves and beads in the center. See that? Versus here's just the you know plain, and then here's one I have in prog. Whoops, sorry. Here's one I have in progress, right? And then I just hand stitch those down, 
So I will attach this as another as a second border, but I haven't, but I have to finish appliquing it. And oh my goodness, do I love working with wool. Y'all, I'm in Texas. We don't do wool a lot. But I'm well, I'm not gonna say we. I don't do wool a lot, but I'm learning and I love it. So what I'm going to do is I am going y'all have this problem? Thread spiders is what Doug, Doug calls them. Okay, I'm going to make a three-quarter Dresden to put on this corner. And I'm going to put one on the opposite corner at the bottom. Does that make sense? So I'm going to have out of my Dresden, instead of doing 12, I'll only have nine blades. And it'll just come like this and it won't cover this. Um, so it's a three-quarter Dresden. So tonight, the reason I'm showing you this is so I can be accountable and show you progress each week, which will probably motivate me. And um, also to show you, tell you that what we're going to do tonight when I'm cutting out, I'm actually going to be cutting and demoing for you the different shapes that I'm going to use in the flower. And then I'm going to get y'all to help me decide which, which, um, how we're going to fill the window and which way we're going to fill it. So keep this in mind and I'll bring this back next week or, or, um, well, I hope next week. That'd be good. That'd be real good. So if you're interested in that, I don't sell the panel. I have no investment in the company that sells it, but I will tell you that it was, the panel is called You Are My Sunshine and is from Timeless Treasures. And I got online to see if people still have it, and they do. So you can get out there and you can find it. Um, and what I did, just so you know, I trimmed my panel to 23 inches, I'm sorry, 23 and a half inches wide and 27 and a half inches long. And then I added 10 inch borders all the way around so that I would have enough room to put my, if this was gone, this much of the Dresden. So I'd have the room to put it on the background. So, when I say a 10 inch border, y'all know that means 10 and a half inch cut with the fabric and um, put it all the way around on all sides. So, there's the details about that. So, now um, we're going to work on cutting some blades so I can show you five of the 50 different ways to make windows. So, look. I picked some cute little yellow fabric to be my Dresden's on that panel. You know, I should leave it out, shouldn't I? Sorry, y'all. I'm not good at laundry, and yet here I put laundry up and folded something and put it away. You don't need to. All right, I'm going to leave this here. So you see, this is going to be like this. All the way around right so it's going to go all the way around all right so that's why i chose this yellow to work on today got it so the first thing i'm going to demo is well now i've covered everything up here it is first thing i'm going to show you how to do is to do a double window that is this one right here I've shown you before, but there are people here I feel like that might not have seen the demo before. You take your tool. You've already cut your blade. I'm going to work from the back. I lay my blade exactly on top of what is already pre-cut. I draw with, I'm using a friction pin, and that's because, um... You know, it'll disappear with heat. The markings will disappear with the heat. Well, um, from what they tell me, in the far north, if it gets cold, it'll come back. But guess what, y'all? I don't live in the far north. I live in the south. Okay, what I am doing is I am cutting a quarter of an inch-ish. I'm big on ish out here's a quarter of an inch printed and you can tell it's more like three-eighths of an inch but it doesn't matter that that's just fine but I give myself plenty of room 
both on the top and on the bottom. So when you make a, this is a double window, when you make a double window, you cut them out. You always snip to the corners because we're going to do a finished edge. And when you um, snip to the corners, on there are five corners on the top one because that's a pentagon shape and there are four in the bottom. So to protect my cutting mat, um, I'm going to put a piece of paper. That's hard for you to see, isn't it? That's not good. Let me get a different piece of paper. Is that better? Can you see that better? Okay. Y'all, I'm famous for glue. Y'all know I love glue. And if you don't, if you don't have good um, so line glue, um, which I, uh, which is wonderful glue. There are other glues you can use. Did you see what I did on every place I snipped? I hit it with a glue and then I put a dot in the middle. I roll that back. I'm going to roll this one back. I'm getting hung up here. I'm going to roll this one back. I'm going to roll this one back, and then I'm going to hit glue on every one of the lower window. Um, see that? I'm struggling with my sleeve. So I just, the technique is start in the corners and press to the middle. Okay, so how many of you have a wool mat that you use? when you're uh, ironing. It is the best thing in the world. The heat from the iron heats your fabric, but the wool mat absorbs the heat and helps um, seal it. Now look, y'all. Look at that precious little window. See that? Very clean edge. No, you know, no problems there. And I don't know what to do with these, but I have four million. If anybody wants some of them, I can send them to you. Because trust me, I have more than my share. Do you want to answer a quick question? Sure. I'd love to. We have a question of what somebody wants to know what material is on this Dresden behind you. For the background? They didn't say. So, um, so lean back and let me show them. Can you see it? Okay, I'll mm -hmm. do that. So this is a whole cloth, and I don't even remember without going to look to see who it was who designed it. But this is a striped fabric. You want to see it? I'll show you. This is what it looked like. You see, I use my leftovers on the back as best I can so that I can not have a lot of waste because what I tend to do is I put my waste in it. I mean, you know, like from that whole project in a baggie and the baggie goes in a bin and suddenly I have three bins and it's like, what am I doing? This is nuts. So I try to use them on the back, but do you see this stripe? When you put a stripe next to another stripe, next to another stripe, it creates circles. Isn't that amazing? So it's, it's the way the wedges go together that makes that circle look. I don't know if that was your question, but if it wasn't your question, write the write it out so that we could um, so I could better explain or or try to answer what you were wanting to know. But that's one of my favorite things about this quilt. That striped fabric. It's amazing to me that when you put blue against blue and you put them together as an in an angle. See that? Just go all the way around. It's just the magic of geometry. And believe me, I almost didn't make it through geometry, but I love it now. Okay, the next shape we're going to make is what I call an elongated upper. So here's the upper window. What we just did was a double. This is a double. 
What we're going to do now is an elongated upper. So here's the upper, and I want it to be longer. Ready? So as quilters, we know how to do things. So when you, if you want an elongated upper, you see this bridge right here? You see the bridge? I drew this line below the bridge, not above the bridge. See, here's above the bridge. So what I'm going to do, pretend like I didn't do that. That's just for demo purposes. See that? You see this straight edge right here? As quilters, we know exactly what how to extend a line, don't we? Of course we do. So we can do this. Now look, there's an, an elongated. You want to see one that I did before? I will show you. Okay, here's an example of the filled double. It's what we did last week. Look at this. Let me can't there's your see what I did I did this whole window but I stopped I went to the bottom of the bridge and that created the elongated upper isn't that easy so speak louder I can't hear you show it up against this one show what up against this one put this up against your template right there the difference in the sizes you want me to do this? Yeah. Okay. How's that? Makes it easier for me to see it. Okay. That's cool. Okay. Same technique, friends. Same exact technique. Now, if you want to use the edge of this, you just go right ahead like this. You can see that's a quarter of an inch, so you can tell where a quarter of an inch is. And it's just a straight line. So, I've just done it enough, right? I mean... I had to do it enough um, in the beginning when we were doing patents to be able to answer all the questions. Okay, so same exact thing, right? Except on the, I mean, and then the next step, of course, is always snip to the corners, glue down, um, fold back. And then um, hit with an iron. I always hit my uh, snip corners first. And the reason is because I have forgotten. You know, in the past, I have forgotten to do it. And then that didn't hold very well. And y'all know that I'm just doing this so I can get to the sewing machine. I'm not, this is not permanent. This is just until I can get it all stitched, stitched down and like I want it. Okay, so it's kind of puffy like this, right? But when you glue it, I mean, excuse me, when you hit it with an iron, woohoo! Now look. See the difference between the two? So I have an elongated upper and a double. Okay, the next one I'm going to show you is how to get this elongated lower. I bet you can already figure it out, right? This one I'm just going to draw. I don't have to cut and I don't think I need to, unless y'all want me to, I don't need to cut it out and glue it and all that. I mean, I can, but I don't have to. I don't think. I think you get the concept, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to draw it. Did you see what I did? I drew the bottom window right like this. And I went to the top of the bridge. I move it away. I connect the lines. And then I cut out to the middle. See that? So, I didn't even hit that. Yep, got it. And then, and. Snip to the corners. Now, the precision in snipping to the corners will uh, make your windows be very uh, uniform. 
if you just snip all the way to the corner. So I guess I can go, since I'm here, might as well just go it. Did you see what I did? I didn't put any on the side, so that ain't going to help. Okay, roll or fold and press, just finger press all the way around. Now, did y'all see how I did that? That little tongue I just held on either side. So you know that the the uh, the ink from the friction pen is going to disappear. Now look. So there's an upper window, here's a double window, and then look, here's the elongated lower window. So that's three. See how fast we're going? Let me see what we're doing now. Oh, oh, I have so much fun. <laughs> it's like, woohoo. Next, we're going to do what is called a full window. Okay, these are, y'all know I have seven million that I've cut and, and so forth. Look here. Here's a full window. Here's a full window, if you can even see. Blue on blue. Mm -hmm. And then this is one I haven't even stitched down yet, but this is a full window. So the, it's easy. Let me see. This goes here. Okay. Full window. It requires that you have your tool and a blade. And some sort of marker, like, you know, friction pen. If you're doing it on the back, you can do a pencil. You can use whatever you're comfortable using. Did y'all see what I did? I went all around four sides of the top and the bottom. And I moved this away. And look, I've got these holes. Well, friends, we just connect the lines. Now, I cut that all out. I have to go a little bit slower on the upper because on that long cut, I can sure mess up. Okay, so there's the piece that comes out. Again, snip to the corners. Y'all know I'm putting this paper under it because I don't want glue on my, on my cutting surface. That's the only reason I put paper there. But normally, on a good day, I use, um, look, my glue is, uh, on a good day, I use freezer paper, but I forgot to bring it over here. Okay, this is like playing the piano right here. Roll to the corners, roll to the, uh, roll, start in the corners and roll to the center. You just, and then, do you see what I'm doing? I put both fingers to hold it and then I press that little tongue back. Now I press. That melts the glue and it um, positions. Now y'all look at that. I mean, isn't that the cutest thing ever? So a big motif could go in there. That would be it. That's so much fun. In fact, let me, oh, I showed you. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is the circle. We're going to do a circle in the top because, you know, in the tool. <laughs> okay, here's the tool. Let me get another blade. Let me get another yellow one. I'll use the back. Okay. This comes in your tool set. This is the piece that falls out of here. Okay? You also get this, but we're going to use this. We're going to put this in. We are going to draw the circle. Do we want a lower window on it? You know, I think I do want a lower window on it, but I don't want just a regular lower window, which I could do, see, just like that. I want an elongated. So I'm going to draw to the top of the bar, or the bridge, as we call it. Okay. 
and look connect my lines okay bottom is the same thing repetition is good to remember right bottom's done center we're still going to cut out the middle you have to go really slow if you're using one of these little ones scissors also work but you're always going to cut and give yourself at least a quarter of an inch see that little that little cute thing okay so you have in a curve you have to snip and I'm gonna say I don't know a quarter of an inch maybe you think something like this I mean and you snip all the way to the edges I hope y'all are seeing this Doug, are mm -hmm. they seeing it? Yep. Okay. Well, if they don't have their eyes closed. Well, okay. But it's on the camera. Yes, it is. Well, if they want to snooze in my class, they can. I get paid either way. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Mindy, you... Mindy just woke up and came on and said hi. <laughs> hi, Mindy. Okay, friends, I'm running out of glue, but here's what we do. Here's the way I play. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm to the end of this. I need to refill my glue. So I'm kind of just using the... Okay, done. Hey, y'all, this was not a new glue thing. It, it does more than five windows, I promise. Now, watch what I do. Do you see when I fold this? Watch that line right there. Do you see how that just folds on the line? Well, that's what happens. It just folds on the line. And so, what I do is I try to work on this side closest to me. Sharon said hi. Sharon, hi, honey. Okay, so y'all see what I'm, whoops, sorry. Y'all see what I'm doing? All right, now I'm going to iron it because I've already got the glue on there. But it's this little, um, oh, I didn't do the bottom one. Are y'all mad at me? Look, look what happened. I, I ironed this one because I got so excited. And it erased my drawing for my bottom, for my my lower window. I am so sorry. I can do it, though. I can see where the line was. Let me just snip to the corners. And then I'll fold it back. And then this one will be ready. But what, I'm going to use some backup glue. I do need that glue, honey. Thank you. Okay, friends, in a pinch, you can use whatever you've got. I know. I don't have a shop. And if I had a shop, I'd sell you good glue. But in a pinch, you just got, sometimes you have to do what you got to do, right? Washable, non-acidic glue is what you want. Okay. Now I'll hit this one with an iron. Now this is going to end up being my favorite one. Look, y'all. Whoops, let me move it onto the black. Isn't that cute? Okay, this is a double, so I'm going to put this one here. So tonight, in that long, however long that was, y'all, we did five blades. So we did a double, we did a long lower, or an elongated lower, we did a full, we did an elongated upper, and we did the circle round one. Okay, now, I want to show y'all something I found today I thought was fun that I had done that I hadn't shown you before. This is a full window. You can tell, right? It's a full window. Except, look, I fussy cut that fish. See that little... Y'all, I'm not a fish person, so I don't know what kind of fish that is. Somebody else probably could tell me, but not me. Okay, in the window fabric, I cut a circle... So it would look like it was a bubble he was blowing. 
Does it look like that? Doug, I'm asking you. Oh, yes. I'm oh. <laughs> he just. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out lost. what kind of fish it was. Okay. So now what I need y'all to do is help me with this. In my windows. I have no idea what I just kicked, but it was something. Felt it. It was a cap to your pen. Oh, okay. So when I put my blades around this corner of this quilt, I want you to tell me which you, I'm going to audition some fabrics to put in my windows. I want you to tell me which fabric you like the best to go in my windows. Now, y'all realize I'm not probably going to use all five of these in one Dresden. I mean, I could, but I might use, I might I don't know what I'll use, but for auditioning, we'll choose the this one. Do you like this? You see it's got little bumblebees on it. And how's the best way for me to do this? Like this? Do you like that? That's choice A. Here's choice B, which is a black and white um, sort of modern stripe. That's kind of fun. Or, and I'm not going to tell you which one I like the best. I want y'all to tell me which one you like the best. Or do you like this one in the window? Do you like the green inside the yellow? Do you like the black inside the yellow? Or do you like the bumblebees inside the petals? And I'll have nine of them. So do you like this one, this one, or this one? Mindy says no to the black. No to the black. Okay. Susan says A. What is A? <laughs> the bumblebee. Okay. That You're getting A's and B's. A's and B's and not the green. No, B-E-E-S. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Fun, fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. A or B and um, maybe mix them. So kind of, y'all, that's kind of what I was thinking, but, I, but I'll play with it. So now you know my design process. I uh, kind of just figure it out as I go sometimes. Yeah, Laura and Sharon are wanting you to. Use the two different ones and what is the comment? Laura and Sharon are wanting you to use the two different fabrics and putting them every oh, other one. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yes, I can alternate. Yeah, so that was what that's actually what I was kind of thinking about um, from a design perspective is looking at. Uh, that's become the consensus. Alternating. Okay. Gotcha. Awesome. Okay. So to cover what we just did, we did a double. We did an elongated upper and elongated lower, a full and a circle. Now, next week, we are going to be looking at how to do a flat top. Let me grab this. Okay. This is what a flat top looks like. And here it is in the short, elongated, and full. So we're going to learn how to do a, a, a flat top. We're going to learn how to, to make one with a hexi in the upper window instead of where the circle is. We'll do a hexi. And then I have one that is called, that I call a art, let me grab it, an art deco. Well, I have one somewhere that's an Art Deco rounded top. We'll do that next week. And that leaves two more open. So if there are any suggestions, let me know. And we can uh, do whichever ones you want. For sure, we'll do the Hexi. We might do the Raindrop, too. Um, but there are 50. So if we do a few at each week, eventually we will get to the end of our road. I mean, you know, to the end of it. And by then, we will have thought of more. So real quickly, I wanted to show you, as I was looking for things, you know, tools in my cabinet to use for teaching and, and um, demonstrating and stuff, I found this little Dresden that I had not 
done anything with that I'm going to show you. It has um, a, a circle with a long with a lower window, just normal, regular, and then one with the elongated, right? And then I fussy cut um, on these little flag ones. There's no window in the bottom, so the point of this one is you can mix and match your your windows, right? So no no lower window a small lower window and elongated upper window, I mean, excuse me, lower window with the circles, which I thought was kind of fun when I did it. It was real fun. But last week, and I can't remember who it was, um, asked me about covering the centers. So now I'm going to talk to you about how to cover the centers. So there's, I know of at least four ways that I've done it um, as I was thinking through that. One of the ways that I've done it I'll grab this and be right back. It's like last week's um, last week's little table topper, the kit that we had. I did an applique circle here, and I'm going to show you how to do this one um, in a few minutes. Um, on this one, that is a uh, rolled edge what I call a rolled edge so and I'm going to show you now how I did that on the rolled edge okay it finished something like this this has been folded up in my closet for a while so it's kind of probably need to uh, trim it up or whatever but I would trim this so they're about the same length all the way around like this sort of and then I would pick a couple of the stitches out from the back and I don't have my Jack the seam ripper with me I don't need him I can show you I believe but I pick out a couple of stitches just like that we all know how to pick out stitches that is not a problem I know we all do and then I would fold it and I and guess what I just don't hardly do anything without glue. I could hit that with glue and fold that back and go all the way, pick out stitches in each of the seams, roll it back. I mean, hit it with glue and roll it back. And when you do that, you end up with this. Here, this is a good one to look at right here. You see it? I just tucked in the ends, glued it down, and went to my machine. And when I attached my... Dresden to the background I just stitched along the edge so that is one way to do it um, another way you can do it for example on this one I'll show you two ways you can do it one is in the accessory set there's a hexi it's the hexagon shape and then in this set is a circle so the way I do it is I put my tool down, I grab my friction pen, I draw the circle or whatever shape. It can be a hexagon, it can, whatever shape. And then, y'all are going to think I'm nuts. It's the same old, same old. I give myself a quarter of an inch all the way around. Obviously, this is a little more than a quarter of an inch. Like I said last week, I am generous with my quarter of an inch. Okay. I'll, I think I need a new blade. What do you think? It's not cutting. There's that one little spot that's nicked. Okay, y'all see this? Got it, Doug? Okay. I do the same process. Oh, where'd my scissors go? There they are. I buried them. Surely I'm not the only person in town that does that. Now I'm going to snip, just like we did for the circle upper window, all the way around. Then I'm going to hit this with glue. And then I'm going to fold this down gently all the way around until I have a perfect little circle. And then I will applique that on top. 
Does that make sense? Y'all have questions about that? Any questions coming in about that? Does that make sense? That's the way I do it. You can do it however you want. If you want to interface, if you want to put some interfacing here and stitch along that line and trim and slip the interfacing and flip it out and iron it all down, you go right ahead. This works for me, and I think that's the whole trick to quilting, right? We all have to know what works for us. Okay, questions, comments, feedback, anything? Got it? Y'all are so smart. You don't even have questions. Connie says, thank you. Answers my question perfectly. Oh, I'm so glad. Makes perfect sense, Catherine says. Woohoo, good. Laura, to Laura Toombs is doing all kinds of thumb things. <laughs> She's got thumbs up. Okay, y'all. I did one, and I don't even remember which one it was. I couldn't show you if I tried because I can't remember which one it was. But I put a little hexagon right in the center, you know, applique, a little hexagon, and it was darling. It looked really cute. So these shapes will fit in the center of the Dresden when you're done with it, if you want to do the applique. So the three way, did I say the points, the way about the points? Okay, that quilt right behind you. You'll hand it to me. It's not like we don't have enough quilts around here, because we do. Okay, y'all, I saw, showed you, I had this one hanging last week. I introduced you to her, and her name is Bless the Cook, and she is Maywood Studios Precious um, Happiness is Homemade Fabric. If you fold the point of your blade like this, if you fold the point this way, stitch a quarter of an inch, flip it out, it comes out looking just like that. That's the fourth way. So a circle applique, a circle by turning under the center, points or any shape like a hexagon or any other shape that you want to that you want to do okay so let me look at my list oh so somewhere Doug do you see a baggie that has pink blades in it pink blades okay gang I have a giveaway so if you will give me one second to find the giveaway, it has disappeared. While you're looking, Michelle Kiddo is watching. <gasps> Hi, Michelle, her friend. Y'all, Michelle was the one that taught me to long arm. So, Michelle, look at the quilt on the wall. Girl, I long armed it. And um, thanks to you. Here's my giveaway. Oh. Did y'all hear that big crash? Did y'all hear that crash? That was me knocking over a cup full of <laughs> pins. Sorry about that. Okay, I thought this was in reachable space. So here's what happened today. I decided I was going to um, cut some blades for the demo tonight. And I went to my closet and I thought, oh my gosh, I don't even know what I'm going to work on. And I didn't want to start a whole new project, but I did. So I pulled this really cute... I don't know how long I've had it. Um, fabric. It's uh, one stitch at a time, and it is by Kim Doris. I don't know. I, I'd have to I'd ha for Henry Glass. It's a really cute little fabric. Well, I cut twelve blades out of it. Twelve blades, and then I decided if I cut these out tonight, then that was going to be one more project that I would have unfinished. And y'all know how we are about those. It's just like, come on, do I have to have one more unfinished project? So then, about that time as I was contemplating what I was, why was I starting a whole new project when I have my other project I want to work on? Why don't I do that? So then I decided, you know what? I will be happy to give this set of 12 blades, pre-cut blades, to anyone who wants them. If you will make a comment, let me think what the rule was. Let me think. If you'd like me to send them to you, then share today's video and comment that you shared. And if you do and you comment that, I'm going to take all the people 
put them in a um, drawing and I'll let Doug pick the name out of the bag and then I'll just send these to you. I'll put them in an envelope and since he's my shipping and packaging department, I'll just give them to him and he'll mail them off to you. And it's only $10 to my PayPal account to get it. <laughs> he's lying, y'all. <laughs> Don't believe him. This is a freebie. I pay. I pay for shipping. I pay for everything. Oh. I meant to bribe me. Oh, to bribe you. Gotcha. Oh, to pick their names? Yes. Okay. And if, we're not putting my name in because I've already, I don't want it. I mean, I, y'all, I don't need another unfinished project. Okay. So I will leave all of this together. And if you're interested in that, I'd be more than happy to give it to you. Um, next week, we'll do five more of the 50 ways. We've already talked about that. Um, if you um, see anything that you want tonight, so Doug, if you'll okay. wake up. And, I am awake. I, I was know, reading. I'm just, I'm just playing with you. Okay, so we have the tools, the, um, the, the uh, picture window, reverse applique tools available. If you want one, uh, all you have to do is in the comment, say that you want one, and I will uh, reach out to you. Also, we have the accessory set that has the four-pack. We have um, the ABC quilt pattern that has the four Dresdens on it. We have a single Dresden. I put T-shirts in those windows. The Bless the Cook pattern, uh, but you don't have to put T-shirts, right? The Bless the Cook pattern is the one that I just did the, out of the uh, Happiness is Homemade. And then here's one that's called Quotes. And then we have a Texas one that I forgot to get out. But we have patterns if you want to put them in the comments. Um, if I have two of these left. So if anyone is interested in one of these wonderful wool mats, they are $21. I have two of them left. If anyone needs one and we will... Um, get this to you and let me see what else patterns I need to tell you patterns are normally 13 tonight the special is $10 and let me tell you all how PayPal works you will put in your comment what you want I will um, go to PayPal and I uh, well I will message you and ask you for your email address I'll go to email I'll go to PayPal it will email you but guess what y'all Sometimes those emails go straight to junk. Now, I don't know why they think I'm junk, but they do. Some email boxes think I'm junk. So if you don't see anything, and give me 24 hours to get that done because um, I, it's a Monday, right? So I'm, I'll be wrapping up, and I probably won't be doing any of that tonight. I don't cut fabric after about 6.30 or 7 at night ever because every time I do, I mess up when I'm tired. I don't stitch much at night unless I'm just chain piecing. Very rarely do I do it. But I do hand applique so I can um, I can go slow. So it'll be 24 hours, within the next 24 hours that I uh, would PayPal or email you and all that. But we'll handle it. And then we will announce the um, winner on the Annie McHugs page. And I will tag you if you are the, well, I don't know how to tag you. So, and we'll announce it next week too. So we will reach out to you one way or the other through the comment. That's how we'll do it. Through the comment, I can message you. That's the way, duh. See, I told y'all it's Monday. Again, I hope your, uh, your Monday is wonderful. I hope it is a marvelous Monday, Monday. And I hope, I really do pray that your whole week is a very blessed week. Okay, are there any more questions or comments or anything before we go? Y'all are so sweet to be here. Thank you so very much. I was scared the first time. And last week I was a little less nervous. This week I was like, oh, I can't wait to see my friends. So thank you for being here. Anything else?